What are all of these and where do they plug in? If it doesn't make sense to you and you're asking those same questions, we're gonna be solving the problem of what plugs into your motherboard and exactly what they do. Welcome back to the channel, and today we're gonna to be going over all of the common connections that are on your motherboard. We're gonna be looking at power connections, data connections, and even case feature connections. I'm gonna be using an Asus ROG Maximus Z790 Extreme Motherboard as an example. Now don't worry if your motherboard differs slightly from this one, as the common inputs that we're going to be talking about are the same across all motherboards. Let's get to it. Now the user guide is gonna provide you with a lot of information and I highly recommend that you take a look at your manual. Here we have our motherboard. We're gonna be starting at the top half of the board. The first connection that we're gonna talk about is the CPU socket, which is located right here. This socket is where you're gonna plug your CPU into and it'll make its connections to every other component from there. To power the CPU, we have an eight pin power socket that receives power directly from the power supply. This connection is typically located here and most motherboards will only have one of these sockets, but motherboards that are designed for extreme overclocking will have two to provide the CPU with the extra power needed during these overclocking sessions. Even if you have two of these sockets on your board, unless you are overclocking to the max, the CPU will operate just fine with a single eight pin CPU power connection. To help keep the CPU cool, there is a four pin CPU fan header that is typically located in this area of the motherboard. Some boards will have this in slightly different locations, but will always have at least one. Some boards will have a second CPU fan header to provide support for CPU coolers that have multiple fans. This is also where an all-in-one or AIO liquid cooling solution will get plugged into. To help keep the entire motherboard and the rest of the components cool, we need a way to power and control chassis fans. The motherboard will have multiple four pin chassis fan headers, much like the CPU fan header, to provide power and control to chassis fans. You're able to daisy chain several chassis fans together and plug them into a single chassis fan header, so don't worry if you have more fans than chassis headers. They may be in different locations around the motherboard, so for instance on this motherboard there's one here and one over here, but they're going to be four pins and they're going to be labeled as chassis fans, so just look for four pin headers and read the label. These long ports are your random access slots or RAM slots. These slots are connected directly to your CPU socket, which allows extremely fast transfer of information between the RAM and the CPU. They're powered through the ATX 24 pin connection, so no need to spend time looking for a way to power your RAM. One thing to note with your RAM slots is this is your A1, A2, B1, and B2 slot. If you're gonna run four memory modules, you're not gonna have to worry about this next piece of information. You'll want to reference your motherboard manual to make sure on memory configurations, but typically if you're running one memory module, you'll want to plug it into the A2 slot right here. If you're running two memory modules, you'll want to plug them into the A2 and the B2 slots. If your case supports USB-C, it will plug into the motherboard using this port, and it's usually located right here. Moving on to the 24 pin ATX power connection that provides power to the entire motherboard. This power will come directly from the power supply, and some motherboards will have them at a 90 degree angle like the Maximus Extreme here, and it'll be on the side of the motherboard. Other motherboards, this port will be rotated 90 degrees and the cable will plug in from the top side. The port will always be located in this area though. Usually cases have USB ports that require connectivity to the motherboard and the motherboard is going to provide that with these ports right here these are for USB 3.2 Gen 1 and are typically going to be located right here again these ports are sometimes oriented straight up and down like the ATX 24 pin power connection here but in this case they're at a 90 degree angle SATA connections are usually located on the bottom right side of the motherboard right here these data connections allow your normal hard drives and solid-state drives to connect to your CPU and RAM they don't provide power, so you will have to use a SATA power cable from your power supply for each SATA device. Moving on to the bottom portion of the motherboard, we're gonna be covering the ports that are located down here. The first ports we're gonna cover are gonna be the PCI Express ports. These are meant for peripheral add-on cards to be plugged in, and these can be standalone audio, video, or networking cards. 
These ports are always going to be located in the lower half of the motherboard and the amount of these slots is going to vary by motherboard. Some of these ports are going to be longer and some are going to be shorter. And the reason behind this is that the longer ports have 16 data lanes to communicate with the CPU and RAM, while the shorter one has four data lanes. However, some PCI ports will only have one lane of communication. These ports right here are called M.2 slots, and this is where you're gonna be plugging in your NVMe storage devices. NVMe storage devices are gonna plug in at an angle into the port, and then you're gonna push it down and screw it into this standoff right here. The location of the M.2 ports is gonna vary by board, but typically they're gonna be located near the PCI ports as they do use the PCI data lanes to communicate with the CPU and RAM. These devices are powered through the motherboard, so no need for a separate power connection. Right over here in this area is typically where you're gonna find your front audio header. If you've ever plugged a set of headphones into your case, this is the connection that allows that to happen. Most modern motherboards will also have ports in different locations that allow you to plug in and control RGB lighting. This motherboard has multiple and two of them are located right here. USB 2.0 headers are typically located here. And if your case has any USB 2.0 ports, this is where you're gonna plug in the cabling for those ports. Some motherboards are also gonna have a four pin water pump header. In this case, this motherboard has one right here and it's meant to be used to power a pump that is part of a custom water cooling loop. You're not gonna need to use this unless you have a standalone pump. Motherboards are also gonna have case feature connections that are gonna be located right in this area here. These pins are gonna to connect to your case features and allow power and reset buttons and hard drive lights to work. And those are the common ports of a motherboard and what plugs into them. If you haven't seen my video on what to do as soon as your motherboard arrives, go ahead and click here so you don't miss that critical step. If you still have questions about your motherboard, go ahead and drop a comment below and we'll get a discussion going to get that question answered. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.